Hello, this is Adrian Jones from Keller Williams, and we are doing a podcast special today. And it's a first time buyer special. And I'm glad to say I've got a very special first time buyer with me. <laughs> um, Alex, we were sat here a couple of weeks ago. We were. You were interviewing me about my business and what we do. And we touched on the fact that you said to me when we first met, you said, I wouldn't mind having a chat with you because I'm a first time buyer. And I said, well, let's come back. So we're here. So here we are, Adrian. Um, I've got a whole load of bits of general advice and thoughts. Um, I thought if we talk about you mm -hmm. and then I'll divert for people in other circumstances where, you know, the advice might be different. We'll try and keep yeah. this as general as we can, mm -hmm. but by having a bit of a focus on you, um, it'll you know, make it a bit more real rather than it just being a very flat, you know, first time buyer guideline. <laughs> Sounds good to me. So, um, so where are you in your first time purchase journey? Very much at the beginning. Uh, very much at the beginning. I don't have my mortgage in principle in place because I know that's kind of the, the place to start. Is only you have that in, in place and then you can start putting offers forward when you do find the property that you like. Uh, but my situation is very much at home with mummy and daddy. Um, you know, my younger brother in the Navy, uh, sisters just come back from university. So I was still very much, although I was the older sibling, I was still at home with mum and dad. Um, I'm single by myself, so it would. I just don't really know where to begin. Okay, so you love them, they love you, but you don't necessarily want to stay under the same roof that's forever. It. Yeah, and that's yeah. A, a, Twenty-seven years old in January. It's like, come on, I'm nearly thirty. I kind of want to go. <laughs> I haven't checked this stat, but the average age is something like thirty-five. Um, scarily, mm. first time. Buying. I do joke with my parents that when they when I put them into a retirement home, I'm going to join them just to just to annoy them even further. <laughs> I do know a father and daughter who actually have moved into a retirement home together. Um, daughter moved in uh, late 50s and then her mm. father lost their mother, his, husband, his wife. And he said, where better to live because she loves mm. it. She bought particularly young there and he bought particularly old. Yeah. Stranger things have happened. So you're dead right. The first thing, it's a bit like anything. I know you don't need to talk about your bike, but I know you've just bought a bike. I have. And you probably had a budget in mind. When you go and buy a pair of jeans at the weekend, you probably think, am I going to spend 100 quid? Am mm. I going to spend 20 quid? Getting your mortgage in principle is very important because it's basically telling you how much money have I got to yeah. spend. And a lot of people do two, make two mistakes. They guess what they think they can afford or yeah. they go on an online calculator, mm. put in, even if it's accurate, and sometimes it's not the most accurate salary yeah. or earnings that they have, work out what they think they can buy, chuck in the bit of deposit they've got, mm. and they go and look at that value. My advice is go and get a mortgage in principle. I would personally say do it through a broker. You pay a broker usually a fee, mm -hmm. but you get access to the whole, what they call the whole market. Or that broker should have access to a lot of the market mm -hmm. rather than just going to Barclays, NatWest or whoever. So that would be my advice. And be honest and transparent about what you earn and how you earn it. Because although they're not doing a detailed test on you there, when that comes... And you're a little bit economical with the truth about how you get paid and how regularly. And is it really yeah. a bonus? Is it really guaranteed over yeah. time? It'll just come to bite you yeah. um, on it's the like, backside. I, I did go to a mortgage advisor probably last year, now that I think of it. And he, again, you know, I've never had my mortgage in principle. It's something I've never... You know, that is the step that I need to take when I get really serious about it. When I know for certain that this is what I want to do, I found somewhere I need to get that in place. Uh, but I did go to a mortgage advisor and just, just to kind of, you know, for them to ask the questions to me, just so I could get a gauge of an, and an understanding of what I could look for. So I wasn't looking at something that was, you know, £40,000 out of my price range and not, and then not, it then didn't get my hopes up because I didn't then see a flat that I fell, you know, head over heels in love with. But then because I'd gone to the mortgage advisor, I wasn't looking at properties that I knew that I would never be able to afford current at that moment in time. Yeah. Um, so It's a perfectly sensible way to do it. The other question, uh, not for an answer here, but what deposit do I have available? And that will be savings that you have, savings that somebody might have offered to you. Mm -hmm. It is not, you know, the, the bank of mum and dad, grandparents um, at your age, you know, you sometimes get gifted from grandparents. People who have property have equity. Think, why am I sat here with equity in my property if I can help somebody else in the family? So establish that quite early on. Uh, it could make the difference between getting a mortgage and not, 
or buying the, ho- uh, the house or flat that really works for you or not. So it is different. That that is definitely the conversation that me and my parents have had. You know, like my mum and dad. You know, um, they know that my younger brother probably will will never really move back home full time unless something does go horribly wrong for him. But it's not looking likely that it will. Um, my sister just come back like I said just come back from university um so she is you know back at home until she can find herself somewhere to live or you know flat whatever it is she's looking for um but my parents you know they are close to retirement they are looking for their retirement plan um and they and they have said that they will look into you know the equity and trying to if they can then support me with giving me potentially you know doubling what i've already got to one side or potentially giving me half just to just to give me that extra oomph and that 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 extra push to what i might need that opens up another podcast special which we will do which is the downsizer one which is you know potentially the position your parents are in um uh and what i would say then with the broker thing call two or three and pick the one that you think knows their stuff that's obviously a bit of a given that you're going to engage somebody who you think actually knows what they're talking about. But somebody who responded reasonably quickly to you, mm. and I'm not suggesting they, they call you back five minutes after, because they're busy people, but they know what they're doing. Um, they have uh, come back to you pretty quickly, and you just think that you're going to get on with them. And when they've come back to you and said, Alex, this is what I think you can borrow today. This is your MIP. The great thing about that relationship with the broker is that when anything changes in the marketplace or changes with your own circumstances, your own earnings, your own deposit, they can immediately update you. Um, And it's on what you can borrow, but also how much that's going to cost you. Because both are equally important. Right now you're thinking, how much can I borrow? How much can I borrow? But then that needs to translate into, this is what my outgoings every month are going to be. So get your finances in place. I mentioned to you last time, a lot of people ignore getting legally ready. Mm. Uh, as, an, as a buyer as opposed to an owner you don't have to do very much I'm going to uh, go through all your property details and pass those to solicit it's a very simple thing of I need to find one get a quote so I know how much this is going to cost me the advantage of that is in my position as the agent when I've got a first time buyer who's got a mortgage in principle gives me his broker's details and says oh and by the way I've already selected my solicitor it's not about who that solicitor is, mm. it's just that preparation immediately puts you at the top of a pile of, of others. Yeah. Because being brutal about first-time buyers, you've got everything from dreamers to must-haves, got to do it now. Um, and you're not right at the end of that extreme because you've not no. got a time pressure. No, I am very flexible in terms of my time scale and what I'm looking at. You know, I'm not looking to, to jump the gun and do it right now, you know, here and now. Um, yeah, I, I probably would say I am a dreamer because I want to, I want to move out. But I've never heard of kill your dreams. <laughs> well, you know, and um, I've never known how you would have a mortgage dream though, as opposed to no. being on stage, which I know is your is, yeah. Is my much, ultimate dream would be more to, your dream, yeah. you know, would to be you know have my my name in lights. You know that I'm now in the next because we were talking about it. I'm in the next Christopher Nolan film. You know that would be bloody hell. That would be the dream. You know, sort of having a house because then I can. If I'm in that film, I can then afford a house. (laughs) Brilliant. brilliant idea. Um, So your flexibility on timing, though, is a good thing, because what you don't necessarily want is a ticking clock of the end of a tenancy Mm. um, or a a desire like, I want to have bought my house before I get married uh, or before we have a baby or Mm. another child. Um, So it is to your advantage, because at the bottom of the ladder, as a first-time buyer, if you're... Yes, I'm, I, I want to buy your flat. We've agreed a price. I've got a mortgage in principle. But to that owner who then needs to go and find their next move, you're the perfect buyer because you're not saying, I've got to be in by December or February. Mm. You're saying, I don't want to wait forever, mm. but I'm at home. I can save a bit more deposit. I can go and work out what curtains yeah. I want, but I'll give you some time to go and find it. Yeah. That puts you in a really, really good and position. And I, I think buyer. that would probably relieve the pressure from the people that I'm buying off of. You know, because they're not going to feel pressured that they've got to be out by a certain point. You know? And like you said, I won't say, right, I'm going to give you the next five years to, to decide what you want to do because that's just that's yeah. unrealistic. You know, I, I would say to people, look, I'm in no rush. I give you six months or, you know, eight months, whatever. But I'm not going to really push it and say, right, you've got two years to find yourself another property. Because I would like to be by Christmas if I'm starting at the beginning of the year, for example. We talked about 
what you can borrow and the cost of that. Uh, the other thing to remember is there are other costs involved in in buying. Mm. So there's the the big one of the the house price. Most of that's going to be covered by the mortgage company, but there will be fees for your broker. There will be fees for your solicitor. Yeah. Depending on what level you buy it, probably not you personally. Uh, you may attract stamp duty, but that again is a, a calculation you'll need to make. You'll have removal costs, possibly. It might be a mate with a van, but that mate with a van well, might still need... <laughs> with my full-time job away from podcasting, I've got a few tricks up my sleeve that I can pull. Because I work for a storage company. So, Ka-ching. you know, I, I know a couple of removal companies that might help me out for free. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, buildings, insurance, furniture, you know, yeah. depending on the state of the property you buy, you yeah. might need to buy some white goods. Ikea, Ikea, here I come. <laughs> exactly. Ikea, eBay, everything in between. Yeah. But you just need to take that into account because you, you will make a sacrifice when you buy. You'll end up not buying that two hundred pound pair of jeans, mm. that next Star Wars figurine. I know more <laughs> about you than you remember. See, Star Wars figurine for sure. Jeans, not so yeah, much. <laughs> um, but you and you will, you know, you'll you'll pair back the next holiday. It's what everybody does at every level when they borrow. They should do. Um, but you also don't want to be there, sat thinking, I cannot do anything in my life, even though I got the mortgage mm. and I've moved in. I really, I wouldn't mind a fridge. You know, it's quite useful to have one. So you just need to take those bits into account. What I'm not going to do is go into a load more detail about the specifics of what is a mortgage and what's a loan to value. I would, if you Google things, there's a whole load of information on the internet about everything. I would, I'm not his biggest fan, but money saving expert Martin Lewis. Yeah, yeah. There is a very good guide that he does about um, buying a home Mm. and first time buyer. So if you just look at that, the good thing about his is. Most of the guides come from a mortgage company uh, or a broker, and they're always steering you maybe to something else. His is straight down the line of just this is how it works. Yeah. Uh, and there's no point in me sat here going through that. Uh, time frame wise, you could buy a, you could find the flat in a day. It might take you a year. How long will it take to buy it? Again, will depend on whether it's what they call chain free, empty, people have moved out, ready to move, or whether you're at the beginning of a long chain of families moving and that could take you six months eight months nine months legally together that will depend on the chain and what what you buy choosing the property Mm. i'm not here to tell you what you're going to go and want to buy but it's important to really think what do i need as opposed to what do i desire Mm. Uh, and i don't need to probe specifically about that but have you had thoughts on what it is you really need to buy and where. Yeah, it would, It would. I mean, you know, like you just said, you know, what I would want versus what I need. I need just your, your standard one-bedroom flat is all I need, you know, and that's probably what I will, what I will all ever need. Um, I'm not a green thumb. I don't want a garden. I never want a garden. Even when I'm 65 years old, I probably then move to a ground floor flat, so I'm not having to then trip and fall down the stairs while I'm carrying my Zimmer frame. But um, I don't want a garden. You know, I, I have a balcony, so I can have a few potted plants and stuff. Window box. I'm, yeah, I'm not one to have a garden. Bonsai? Uh, yeah, no. a Japanese peace lily. <laughs> you know, um, but, you know, but then my dream would be to have potentially, you know, a two, three bedroom flat again. Um, you know, probably, you know, they were, you know, one of the bedrooms would definitely be, you know, your, your spare bedroom. But then the other one, I'm sure you can guess, would be the, the man cave. <laughs> well, we, all, we all desire one of those. That actually should be high up on the list. In fact, it should, should yes, come in I before mean, yeah. other considerations. Absolutely. Um, and you touched on something there by saying, you know, and then hopefully a two or three bedroom flat. That mm. could be a house. But I think it's important to remember this is a first time buyer or first time purchase. And for most people... It won't be their last purchase, and the second purchase will often come within a few years of that because of life changes, which are mm. usually, you know, relationship or earnings, um, and both of those will trigger the desire to buy something that's just a little bit better. Mm. It doesn't necessarily need to be bigger. It might be a, might be a one bedroom flat in a better place. It's probably just the location. Like at the yeah. moment, I'm looking, you know, Camberley, Farnborough, but come October, my location for work changes, so I might look at Guildford. Um, just so then I don't have to rely on public transport to get to and from work, and I've got good working legs, so I can walk, or in my case, I can now I can now ride. But so I think even if I found somewhere in Camberley, it wouldn't that wouldn't still be my forever. 
Yeah. yeah. And I think the, the point about that being a first purchase and not the last purchase or not even a long-term one, you will make a compromise on your purchase. I, I've got a great anecdote for per- property compromise purchase. I used to work for a multimillionaire who had several properties, but he had three principal residences. He had one in the Boltons in Knightsbridge at the time was worth 30 million pounds or more. <laughs> he had a country estate uh, outside Newbury. Don't actually know what it was worth, but it had more bedrooms than you'd ever need. Mm. And he had a place in the south of France. Mm. He, one evening when we were talking about compromise on the stuff, he mm. reeled off like that five things on all three properties that were compromised yeah. for him as a multimillionaire with three properties. Mm. They were very much multimillionaire's issues. They were he- helipads, yeah. turntables for his car. <laughs> in the front driveway it, but it just proved the point yeah. that even he was eaten up by mm. by these compromises it, and the, my point out for yourself and anybody else remember how long you're going to be living here probably mm. and these things can change a bit but it is my first one mm. um what do i need it for now and also my strong advice would be buy it for yourself um quite a lot of people look for a two-bedroom flat because they buy it for their parents, when they come and stay, their mate, when they stay over. What mate isn't going to be happy to sleep on a sofa bed? And if it's your parents, you sleep on the sofa bed and you give them your bedroom. You I know? just gestured to Jack behind the camera because when when we do, you know, um, things and then I've got the next day off, it'd be a case of, you know, I'll pull out the, you know, the, the, the bed and you can crash in the living room. Exactly. Um, which... I'm happy with. Like, I don't care. Like, I've grown up going on camping holidays. Like, I don't need... a another bedroom all to myself when I'm just staying at a mate's house. So, And what that means is you'll end up wasting less time searching for the property that mm. you'll never get. And then six months later, nine months later, either give up or then rationalise what you're going to buy and then think, why didn't I do this six, nine months ago? And so it's mm. a problem. I, it's a, it's a, I've seen it with younger friends when I was younger who, you know, kept looking, kept looking. And I said, have you found anywhere yet? No, still can't. And I thought, they're earning perfectly well. They they know what they where they want to be and what they want, and they just were looking at something that was just a bit too out of mm-hmm. out of their reach. Yeah, I think if, if if I were to look for a two bedroom, you know, flat, for example, that the second bedroom wouldn't be a bedroom. <laughs> it just wouldn't. Yeah. You know, there'd probably be a sofa. There probably well, no, there wouldn't be a sofa in there, but there'd be a, a table and a chair in there because I would turn it into my geek office. You know, I would have my computer in there. An yeah, office from it, home it, is, it would be my office. It, yeah. it wouldn't be a second bedroom. Even when I had people to come and stay, they'll be like, oh, we're just crashing here. I'm like, well, you can't sleep in there. It's not a bedroom. Well, you're, that office room in a one-bedroom flat, that mm-hmm. means your lounge remains, you know, a space yeah. that's enjoyable. Rather than that's kind of what it was as well, is that I would have the second bedroom as a room for all of my geek memorabilia because then it wouldn't clutter up the rest of the flat. What? And it's kept behind a closed door. <laughs> On viewings, uh, not necessarily first time round, but if you see something, I really like this, and then thought, oh, blimey, I've found something I actually might buy here. This is a pretty scary moment. Uh, take a trusted friend. Could be a family member. I but did somebody, that with Jack. Somebody who's pretty impartial. They know you well enough to know what you like and dislike, but they'll give it a, they'll give it a non-emotional touch. Mm. And that might actually encourage you to buy it because you're, you've got buyer withdrawal, even though mm. you haven't bought it yet. You've got that, Ooh, I think yeah. I've found it. Somebody like Jack might turn around and say, this is absolutely perfect for you. Why aren't you buying mm. it? Or he might turn around and say, wrong area. Why are you buying this? It's, yeah, it's, we, we went so to visit one in Camberley, um, just around the corner from, from um, Jack's ex-partner, um, where his children reside. And you know, I took Jack along with me just, just to see a second opinion, because I was very much in love with it. And I just wanted a second opinion that that I trust. You know, Jack is a very good friend of mine. And um, I think I must have been blinded by what I saw because you picked up on things that I hadn't seen. Um, you saw um, the, the boiler in the corner of the living room and things. Yeah. You, do you remember? You, yeah, yeah. You, you picked up on certain things and you were he, and then Jack was asking the estate agent himself as well, going, oh, what about this? What about this? And it was stuff that I hadn't thought of. Because, again, I'm still very, not naive, but I'm, I'm still very new to it all, you know. I've never lived alone, not even a, in a rental property. Um, I think the closest I've ever lived to alone is when my parents go on holiday, yeah. <laughs> you know, and I have to go out and I've got 
to budget for food and things. And it's not like I can't just have Domino's, KFC, McDonald's, yep. repeat. You know, it, it, I, and it gives me a sense of what it would be like. Because but, this this is a heart and head purchase, and very few people buy wholly with with their head. Mm. Um, the first trigger to to want to buy a property is usually something about the property that stirs the emotion in. For, and it's, it may sound like an odd thing, and it's I again from personal experience. I remember buying previously quite a few years ago when we went to see two properties. There was one that we thought ticked every single box and was almost like a shoe in that we'd go and see this and make an offer because we've been waiting for it to come on the market. And another one, which was, well, we may as well go and look at it because it was a bit interesting, a bit quirky. We just went to see that one because first one walked in, ticked all the boxes, walked out and said, don't like it. Mm. The other one we bought. I think that's probably, I think that's a similar thing to what my parents did. Um, I remember on one of the viewings that we did before we, you know, before my parents then bought the one that we, we, you know, we're living in now. And we've been there since 06. So we've been there a fair old while. Um, and we went to see a bungalow and my mum and dad just wanted to go and view it because they then turned it into a game for me and my brother and sister, you know, trying to entertain the children whilst on a house viewing. My dad said to me in the car, right, when you go in, I want you to count how many dragon statues there are. And this, this house was, no, this bungalow was littered with them. You know, we came out afterwards and my parents didn't even, <laughs> they didn't want to buy it in the slightest. It was purely for the quirk factor yeah. of, of of what it had inside and then afterwards it was like my dad was like right how many did you guess oh well, i guess about 104 dad you know <laughs> what about you oh well i only got 55 you know it was kind of it was purely just because it was quirky yeah they had no interest in buying it no interest in making an offer it was just because they just wanted to see what the kids thought of it and the um the trusted friend starts to bring the head into it a bit but also so does the second viewing uh, so even if you did both of them on your own, you first time look at it and you think, my heart says I really like this. When you go and look at it a second time, that's when you have that sort of more serious, right, I'm thinking of buying this. I better check the boiler. Yeah. Better check how good these carpets are. I took my mum I took my my mum uh, along um, on a visit um, that was a flat in the atrium in Camberley. And my mum has, you know, obviously lived by herself and, and whatnot. So she, she knows the questions to ask. So she came along with me and she asked, like, What's the brand, broadband like? You know, strength like? Um, what day do the bins go out? Is it a bin per flat or is it a communal bin? What's the ground rent? You know, it, it was all these questions that obviously I had no idea about asking. But yep. my mum was there you know, reeling them off. And I was obviously then finding out the answers. It sounds like a good idea would be to send your mum and Jack off to buy the house <laughs> yeah, and then, for you. And then tell me and afterwards. Then say, we bought it. Here, here you go. Well, I think if that was the case, they'd probably find one in the Outer Hebrides in Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> so they didn't have to see me weekly. Oh, I think your mum question would be like, he doesn't need a man cave. He needs to grow up a bit. He just yeah. needs to grow up, yeah. <laughs> oh, don't, don't ever do that. Yeah. Well, Jack don't, tells don't me ever. that I don't need a flat. I need a warehouse. <laughs> um. Before it becomes too anecdotal from me and from you, actually, what what are, what is there that um, scares you or worries you or excite? I mean, actually, there's no point talking about what excites you because that's yeah. about buying. I think what is it about the journey that that could scare you or intimidate you or worry you to to actually never do it? I think it's not necessarily a worry to never do it because it's something something I want to do. It's that if I get into a property and I've paid for it, I've moved in, I'm there in my living room eating Ben and Cherries at one o'clock in the morning and I'm in my flat. Too much information, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, and I'm, and then it just hits me and I hate it and I want to go home. Okay. That's my worry is that I get in and I, and I spend six months in this flat and it, it just hits me that this is my flat. I bought it, it's mine, I'm, you know, doing this, that and the other, and it just hit, and just something, it's like the realisation hits me, I'm like, this is my home now, and it'll be a case of, I want to go back to mum and dad, because I would be doing it all by myself, and I would be in the flat by myself, um, it would just be the realisation that I can't just get up and move back home, because obviously I bought it, I've not rented it, You've got options there. It's it's a it's not a um, it's not a nice scenario. It's probably one that people have done, where for whatever reason they just got it wrong. Mm. I think 
one of the advi- the, uh, don't start me on how long the legal process is in this country because it's probably the bane of my in fact it is the bane of my life and my job yeah one of the advantages of that is it does give you an opportunity to to really question and probe what you're doing um it shouldn't take three or four months by the way to suddenly think actually this isn't the place for me it's normally in the first week so even though you viewed it you viewed it again said yes and you agreed it it's usually in that first week where something comes up or indeed you personally think this just doesn't feel right, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm withdrawing. So most sales fall through in the first few yeah. days. Um, in that scenario, it isn't the end of the world uh, because as long as you've bought well, you might lose some of your cost, but you do still have the opportunity to say, this isn't for me, but I mm. will sell on. As a bit of advice about buying, the, the properties that we struggle to sell and any agent will struggle to sell is when there is one massive factor that most people won't buy it for that reason. And it's often main road, busy main road, busy country lane. Okay. So somebody's looking and this is a house as opposed to yeah, a flat, but yeah. somebody buys in a little hamlet, 20 houses dotted down this lovely mm-hmm. road, but it runs along a B road, which has got trucks. Yeah. So you're in the middle of nowhere but you've got vroom, vroom trucks. I may as well live in the middle of the town if I'm going to get that. So they're difficult. Um, and top floor flats with no lifts. So if, if there is a big reason why somebody wouldn't buy that particular flat and you're the, the, the one who would, I'd still question that because the resale difficult. That doesn't mean you've got to find a place that everybody's going to love, mm. but if you find a place that the majority of people are not going to look at. Yeah. That makes it difficult to sell it on. And I know you haven't even bought one yet, mm. but that is a factor to take into account. Absolutely. I, I, I don't think I would even consider buying a flat that didn't have a set of lifts. Mm. Not because I'm lazy and I don't want to go upstairs, but if I if I am in a... Say something goes really well in my life and I, I, I can live in London, for example. That would be my dream. You know, I, I'm in the next Christopher Nolan film and I can live in London. Christopher, you're listening. He's plugged that. I am. I am. Come on, hit me up. You know, (laughs) I'm ready. (laughs) Um, But I I think, you know, if I lived on the twelfth floor of a of an apartment block and it had no stairs, it had no lifts, I ain't moving in. No, (laughs) Um, there is no way that I'm like, I've got to go to Morrison's, but I've got to walk up seventeen million flights of stairs to get to my flat front door. It wouldn't work. What scares you about the actual buying process or viewing process? You talked about the ultimate scare of bought it, got it wrong. Is there anything else within the process I, that worries you? N- not so much. I think I'm pretty comfortable with viewing because I've been on a fair few viewings by, viewings by myself. You know, I'm active on on Right Move and I'm seeing what's out there, and I look at Right Move Zoopla and you know the other the other sites out there. Um, so it's not the worry of, of of booking a viewing and going to a viewing because I'm quite confident in doing that, and I. I'm very comfortable with talking to people I don't know. I mean, our first meet was the first time we ever met and we had a brilliant conversation. That's what you thought, but anyway. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But no, that element doesn't scare me at all. I am very happy to, 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 to book my own viewings and, and, and do it by myself. Yeah. But, you know, maybe for the second viewing or so if a friend's in the area, but like, can you just tag along with me? Um, but nothing else to take. I think the worry is that I would never save enough. Okay. Yeah. Because I'm quite bad at buying things. Okay. You know, my electric bike being one. I needed that. It's kind of going to be a necessity when I get relocated for work because um, I will become a bit of a train commuter and it will help me get to and from stations either end. Um, but, yeah, it's just the worry that when I've saved enough and then I see something and it's like, you know, now no, I've dipped into my savings and I don't have enough. And even if I've then potentially started the ball rolling and I've, you know, said I've got this deposit and then I go back and I'm like, well, actually, that deposit's now half because I'm an idiot. Only you can control that. Um, yeah. That's my worry that's, is that I can't, con- that I, I lose control sometimes. Yeah. And it's not, no, I'm not out there like tapping left, right and centre, you know, but. Without sounding like a business geek, all I would say is have, account- get, have an accountability partner. Mm. So if you've shoved a certain amount of money to one side, 
you tell them that's what you've done and yeah. um, they keep asking you, is that still there? Mm, yeah, it is. Yeah, 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 sure, it's still there. So my bit of summary to this, and thank you, by the way, your insight's really good. I hope anybody listening to this, although we've talked, I think it was important to talk about somebody's circumstances rather than me talk to another agent about how do I prepare to buy as a first-time buyer. And I know some of this has been specific to you and anecdotal, but I hope anybody listening in has mm. realized ah they're your circumstances but these are mine and obviously if anybody wants to get in touch with me about their own circumstances i would do that what i would suggest then find out what you can spend tackle the question about your deposit with your parents and your family because that is often a conversation that ends up happening three or four months down the line when you've got a bit of a deposit you've been looking you can't quite find what you want and their deposit bit makes the difference between you actually being able to get a mortgage that is affordable because we didn't i haven't gone too much to the specifics about mortgages but in very simple terms the bigger the deposit you put down the more mortgage opportunities you get and the low and the cheaper that money is it's just a very simple yeah, analysis yeah, yeah. so a lot of people start searching and then mum mum and dad aren't whoever say actually we could help you out here mm. And I know it's a, it's a brutal conversation. It's a tough one, but it sounds like you've got a good enough relationship to have that mm. conversation. So and I think that they, them conversations, you know, they have kind of started. And my mum and dad do want to help. And and Nan has said, you know, if you do find somewhere that you, that you love, you know, I could potentially give your inheritance early to help yeah. it. And so. and those those conversations are worth having. If you and if yeah, you've got absolutely. those relationships, then that's brilliant. Yeah. So work out what that is. Um, the solicitor choice is easy, and I, I don't know if I mentioned it, but do it on the same basis as the broker. Somebody responds pretty quickly, sounds like they know what they're doing, has got a bit of Google review or somebody you know of, um, and you think you're going to be able to get on with them. That's important. What I would then say about buying, we all now can buy so many things that have to talk to and touch a human being, and sometimes it's actually quite a, a, a good thing not to have to talk to, to estate agents too often, says here's one. Um, but what I would say is if you start to look at a certain area and you're looking at a relatively small patch, you will soon realize the three or four or five agents who are selling the majority of the property in that area, whether they're good, bad or indifferent, and I'm not going to comment on that, phone them. Okay. Phone them, get to know one of the people in that office and say, I know I keep looking at things on Right Move and Zoopla and what have you, but I, Alex, am looking to buy a flat in Camberley for this much money. Mm. I want to buy one. Yeah. And they will remember you because hardly anybody does that anymore. Mm. And people come out of the ether as a stranger off right move on a Thursday evening when it, a flat goes live and in comes Mr. Smith and Jones and Brown and everybody else. You, when they get that property on, because the thing to remember is there's usually a, a week or two between them first knowing about a property and it going live. They've got to do some, however well they do this, and don't start me on staging of property. It's a completely separate topic. I believe very strongly in presenting whatever product you've got to the very mm. best you can to get the best price. A lot of agents don't do that. They'll do mobile phone shoots in a, in a flat in order to win the instruction, not make the beds and just shove it online. Good one to buy, by the way, because you won't get the best price for that. So buy from a bad agent and mm. sell through a good one. So sell through me when you... When you come to it. <laughs> um, but the thing to remember is there is that lead in time. Yeah. And most of the agents you'll be dealing with, you will have one or two in that office competing with each other. Uh, this is another bad thing about agency. But I'm like a golf topic here. So good. <laughs> so badly. If you've got, just imagine you and I mm -hmm. are sat in an estate agent's office as salespeople waiting for Jack the valuer to bring back a flat. And he says, I've got a new flat to sell. You and I are actually in competition with each other to sell that flat. Because you're not going to give me a bit of your commission and vice versa. So, And that doesn't usually work in the vendor's favour, by the way. Because instead of between us finding the best buyer, you will swear blind to, to Jack as the manager or the vendor that you've got the best buyer. And in fact, I might have the best buyer, but they haven't viewed it yet. Separate discussion to have, but make friends with those agents so they think of you when one flat comes in. You'll get preferential treatment. And as long as you turn up, as long as you give them feedback... You you will be in their, in old fashioned terms, their hot box. Yeah. When people used to actually have a box of applicants, they don't have that anymore. But you will jump out of this ether of miscellaneous right move and zoopla names. That would be my last bit of advice. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Adrian, for all the advice and the help.
It's a pleasure. I'm going to store it away up there. And uh, I haven't got, I haven't got yeah. any flats in Camberley. It's not really my patch. Damn. But, you know, <laughs> but you'll be <laughs> absolutely know. fine. There's, plenty, sure to, I'll find there's plenty to choose from. Um, thanks, everybody, for listening into this. If you've got any general questions about first-time buyers, mortgages, moving house, you know where we are. Um, it's been great. We'll catch up again on another podcast special sometime very soon.